There we go. There we go. There's one. What is up guys, it is Thomas Massive coming at you again with another Max Flight Outdoors video. Took some fishing out of the boat today. Uh, this is a lake that I grew up fishing. Fished here a ton of times. Uh, there's bluegill, bass, crappie, and rainbow trout in this lake. Possibly a couple other species, who knows. Those are the ones that I catch most of the time though. Ah, oh, it's windy today. So boat control is gonna be a lot of fun, especially for my uh, first time out this year. So hopefully, hopefully we can get that under control and uh, catch some fish. Catch y'all later. Hooked up, baby. First cast on this end of the lake. Nice little largey. Just a dinker, but I mean, gotta start somewhere. Smoked that jig, man. Nice pretty little fish. It's aggressive. Had a hold of that jig right away, man. Feels good. That feels good. Okay, so the buck bass are up shallow. It's just whether the big girls have moved up yet. Oh. Oh man, that was a big fish. I couldn't tell what it was. I think it was a trout. Just looked the wrong shape to be a bass. Oh, there we go. Eight again. Oh yeah. I thought the last one was small. This one's even small. A little dinker. But still. Still fun right there, man. Feels good after a long winter to get them, get them biting again. Old buddy took flight for a second there. Beautiful old bass on the old swim jig again. Oh damn, there we go. There we go, there's one of those better ones. Come on, baby. Come on, baby, don't jump, don't jump. Do it to me, don't you spit it. Yes, sir. Finally. So they are up there in shell. Got that red, man. What a nice fish. How about that? Two and a half, three pounder, probably two and a half. Sweet, freaking sweet, man. Get a quick release. Down he goes. Let's go. Fine. God damn it. He ate it on the speed up. Usually they eat it on the, the slow down, right after the speed up. He ate it on the speed up too, I didn't even really set the hook. It's a big trout. I know my pliers up here, man. Yeah. 
everybody. I don't need to do that. Let's play nice and get this over with real quick. My hands are so dusty, I don't really want to touch him because they have a slime coat that's really, uh, just doesn't do well with getting touched. Your fingers will remove it really fast and it'll kill the fish. So I try my best to just not even touch them if I can help it. That's why fly fishermen always dip their hands in the water before they grab them. You see that? Let me get back over there. What is up with that? Why does it keep surfacing right there though? That's what I can't figure out. This bait is not a topwater bait. Under no circumstance should it come up like that. But it did. And the fish chased it both times. I wonder if it didn't have something to do with the fish chasing it that made it come up. I wonder if that fish did Oh! That one freaking stopped me, man. What a nice big rainbow, baby. Pliers are ready. We got one hooking him right now, so let's get him up here. Get the boat. <coughs> Careful not to let him touch the plywood or anything else, because that'll also dry him out. Back he goes. Safe and sound so somebody else can catch him. Smoke that thing, man. Can't say this is that one that we cast it at for sure, but it's the right direction to be that one that we cast it at. These little ones are the ones that'll stick you, man. That hook flying around back there. Gotta be careful there, man. Alright, catching some trout now. Alright guys, uh, I just want to run through some of the stuff that uh, worked for me today because I mean we didn't have the greatest day ever. We were only out here for like three hours though, so we did pretty decent for the time we were out here. So I just want to run through uh, run through what I caught them on quick so you guys can try to replicate this pattern. Um, first off, we were fishing a Guggen Squad uh, swim jig and I don't even know what kind of tails these are. Some kind of swim bait trailer with a bright orange tail. Um, Nice, I think it's called the grass jig is what they call it, but it's it's a swim jig. Um, really quality swim jig. This one's pretty light, it's a quarter ounce, quarter ounce swim jig. But I was fishing really shallow stuff and swimming it through a lot of weeds. So rather than getting bogged down in those weeds, I wanna float over them. And then when I feel the last weed, I'm letting it sink off the back of the weeds. And uh, catching quite a few fish doing that. Let's see, the second bait we caught fish on today. Actually, we only caught fish on two baits today. We caught all of our bass on that one. 
and we cut all of our trout on this one here. Um, I don't know why trout like these things other than they're shiny they're, and they're loud. They put off a lot of vibration in the water. They're stocked trout. They're going to hit just about anything you're throwing. There was another guy out here who was throwing a spoon and he was crushing them. So that honestly isn't that hard. Oh, the reason I think my baits are working today, the ones that did, is, I mean, like I said, those stock trout will hit just about anything. But uh, the swim jig, this water is about that 57, 58 degrees. It's starting to warm up, but our fish aren't spawning yet. It's, what is today's date? May, today's going to be like the 11th, May 11th, I think. Um, so these fish are starting to think about moving up, though. They're... They're wanting to move up to spawn, but it's just the water's not warm enough in the day, the photo period, which has a lot to do with it too, just isn't quite long enough yet. So those little bass that we were catching, buck bass, which are little male bass that are starting to move up, um, they're moving up, getting ready to spawn. They're uh, waiting, just waiting for the females to get there. Those big females are the ones that decide what time spawn starts. And as you saw, I mean, that one, there's, I don't think that was a buck bass. That was a two and a half pound fish. We're up north. I mean, if we were in Texas, maybe that'd be a buck bass, but up here, we just don't grow male bass like that. That had to have been a female up there. And she was up shallow. She was tucked inside of the weeds. The lake's kind of flooded right now. And uh, there's a ring of cattails around the whole lake. And in that particular spot, there's the ring of cattails. And then she was behind the cattails. I actually watched when I set the hook, I pulled her over those cattails. Part of the reason you set the hook so hard is to get them out of the weeds too. Um, but she was the only, I mean, I can't say she was the only big one that moved up shallow. There could have been other ones that didn't, didn't want to bite. These fish are really finicky. It's super clear water and there's quite a bit of fishing pressure. So these fish, a lot of times just won't bite. They'll get scared by your lure actually, even though it's a great presentation. I mean, you could have it where you catch a five pounder on one cast and you scare away a three pounder on the next cast because it doesn't like that lure. It's been caught by something too similar before. So... It's a little tough to say exactly what pattern they're on, but those buck bass are definitely moving up. So they're thinking about spawning, and that female was up shallow on the wind. She was on the wind blowing side of the lake, which all the warm water gets pushed across. So she was definitely looking for that warm water up there. It's just hard to say whether she was up there eating bluegills in the warm water or whether she was up there looking for one of those buck bass to spawn with. I think it's still a little early. From just from looking at pictures with dates on them from years past, it's still a little early. We should be looking at another probably two weeks before the spawn really hits. Um, but I'll be out here then looking for those big bass. Find a nice sunny day where it's a little calm. And we'll be out here looking and catching on beds. Catch y'all then. Oh.